Chickamauga and Chattanooga National Military Park historian Jim Ogden stands front-facing in uniform of a tan flat hat, gray shirt, and green trousers. He stands in a slightly wooded area with a thick wooded area behind him about 15 yards. Good morning. And thank you for joining this program that the National Military Park is presenting this year as we virtually recognize the 157th anniversary of the Battle of Chickamauga. Frequently, it is on little things that big things turn. And that is certainly the case here with the events of September the 19th, 1863, particularly in the morning particularly as uh, what becomes the Battle of Chickamauga on that day, um, the, the, the history book's first day, day of the, uh, the Battle of Chickamauga. We're here in the area of Jay Steam Sawmill, the intersection of Jay's Mill Road and Reed's Bridge Road, just a little um, a bit short of a half mile west of Reed's Bridge on West Chickamauga Creek. On this Saturday, September the 19th, Braxton Bragg would hope to simply resume his maneuver of the, uh, the day before. His plan of trying to cross troops downstream of the Union left flank as it was on the, um, uh, the 18th of September and to interpose elements of his army between the Union Army and the city of Chattanooga. Um, was uh, still potentially a viable plan. But by the morning of September the 19th, things had changed. And Bragg had not fully anticipated those um, potential overnight changes. And so that morning, as the day dawned, Bragg and his staff, having come up from his headquarters at Leeds Tanyard, um, was riding amongst the troops who had crossed the creek the um, day before and had mostly bivouacked along and astride the Alexander Bridge Road to the south of us um, and, prep, um, and was advising them to prepare to, on order, resume the movement of the day before. But even before dawn, on the morning of September the 19th, events would happen in this area which would change the course of that coming day. About midnight, the end of the 18th, the beginning of the, uh, the 19th, there was a short brief engagement in this area just to the south of us between some mounted forces on both sides. The Union mounted force was a small body of scouts that had been created within a brigade commanded by Union Colonel Dan McCook. McCook, one of the 17 fighting McCooks um, of the, uh, the Civil War era, um, uh, had been ordered to bring his brigade on the afternoon of the 18th of September out here to the area of Reed's Bridge to support um, and aid and reinforce the Union Cavalry under Robert H.G. Minty that was fighting to defend Reed's Bridge. However, by the time that McCook's men began to arrive in this area, having marched south from the Rossville Gap area um, on the Lafayette Road and then turned east on Reed's Bridge Road, as they march out towards Reed's Bridge, it is getting dark. Also, for McCook, as he approaches, he is not finding the rear of Minty's command, as he might expect. He's not um, finding Minty's baggage wagons or even ordnance wagons or ambulances along the road. He's not encountering um, any, or may, certainly not many, if any, um, of um, Minty stragglers or men who are, um, are, are, are coming back off of Minty's line. There's no sound of an engagement um, in front of him. And as darkness begins to settle over the battlefield on September the 18th, Bra uh, uh, Dan McCook will halt his column along the Reed's Bridge Road 
just a little bit to the west of where um, we are now um, and deploy his five regiments of infantry and one battery astride the road. He will order um, skirmishers as usual deployed um, and those troops are, um, are sent forward uh, about 300 yards from uh, the main body of the brigade and deploy astride the Reeds Bridge Road on both the north side and south side of the road and in particular in the area where we are right now, along the western edge of a field. Now at the time of the Civil War, the field here at Jay's Mill was larger than it is today. Today it's only about half as, um, uh, as wide as it was at the time. Um, the, um, uh, the area where we stand right now would actually be part of the field. The true western edge of the field would be just where the understory, the vegetation, gets really thick there just beyond me. Um, the, also, the field um, uh, had a projection to the west. In many ways, um, this field looked like a backwards and very chubby L with that lower portion um, projecting westward um, in this direction. And here south of um, the Reeds Bridge Road, McCook's skirmishers, men of the 52nd Ohio 1st stretching south from the road, and then two companies of the 86th um, Illinois um, cur um, were deployed along the edge of the woods and then their skirmish line bent or bowed back to the west to protect the right flank of the brigade. Dan McCook's small detachment of mounted scouts, men detailed from the uh, various regiments of his brigade and the artillery battery, and mounted on, um, on horses that they had um, acquired in their circuitous march to this area. Um, out of Middle Tennessee, down into North Alabama, over to Stevenson and Bridgeport, and then on to <clears throat> um, the Rossville Gap area, that small detachment of mounted scouts continued to range out in front of uh, McCook's new position. And as they did, particularly as they moved forward to the area where Jay's Mill Road um, intersects Reed's Bridge Road, they would encounter small numbers of Confederate soldiers. Now, earlier in the day, Bushrod Johnson's column then joined um, and under the command of John Bell Hood, having seized um, Reed's Bridge, and after Minty's cavalry had left this area, that Confederate column had come up to the intersection of Reed's Bridge Road and Jay's Mill Road, and um, under um, Hood's interpretation of Bragg's orders for the day, had made a left-hand turn onto Jay's Mill Road and marched on south towards Alexander's Bridge and towards Lee and Gordon's Mill, halting <coughs> for the day astride the um, uh, Alexander Vineyard Road. Despite the um, neatness of movement suggested by um, even the most detailed maps of, um, of any battlefield, no unit as it, um, it moves, um, moves completely um, uh, through an area without some um, elements still following on. There are always stragglers. There are always men who are on um, some sort of duty, being sent um, uh, back towards the rear or being sent towards the front. There are always wagons um, carrying supplies forward, delivering them and going to the rear. Um, additionally, for um, Johnson and Hood's men, there had been some fighting to gain control of Reed's Bridge and while the medical personnel of um, those commands had not had a large number of wounded soldiers to take care of, 
they had had to prepare um, for that. And so there were uh, ambulances and medical personnel uh, moving to catch up with the, um, uh, the column to close up on the main body once again. And as Dan McCook's mounted scouts come to the area of the intersection of um, Reed's Bridge Road and Jay's Mill Road, they round up some of these passing soldiers. Some of those Confederate soldiers, um, not knowing that the main column had turned south, particularly after dark and when the um, evidence um, in the dirt road surface would have been harder to see, um, actually could have continued further west on Reed's Bridge Road and walked into the Union picket line. And these Confederate soldiers who um, uh, become captured, uh, including bandsmen, from uh, McNair's brigade and um, a medical officer from McNair's brigade begin to give Dan McCook the sense that there is some sizable body of Confederate troops out in this area. Um, while Dan McCook's men said that they could have captured overnight um, more uh, Confederate soldiers passing along this route, and McCook later reporting that he captured 22 Confederates um, McCook did not um, entirely interdict movement on the Reeds Bridge Jays Mill Road corridor that night. As the 18th ended and the 19th began, Dan McCook's scouts probing a little bit to the south of the Jays Mill um, uh, area will make contact with some Confederate cavalry. And there will be a brief uh, firefight in the woods to the south of us which will cause Dan McCook to have his men who were sleeping on their arms in line of battle um, fall in and form up in anticipation of potentially some larger action. But that brief in, or, but that encounter is brief. McCook's scouts will, um, will quickly disengage and pull back closer to McCook's brigade and the Confederate um, cavalry that they had encountered will themselves pull back, having discovered that there is some federal force not that far distance to the north, and they then will deploy um, uh, their force, elements of the 1st Georgia Cavalry, will deploy um, their force astride the uh, Jays Mill Road um, to help picket and protect the rear of the Confederates who had moved down on to Alexander uh, Vineyard Road. But they will report this um, uh, contact to their brigade commander, John Pegram, um, who is also their um, uh, division commander, Pegram awaiting the arrival of um, Henry B. Davidson to take command, direct command of his brigade, um, and Pegram will report it to Nathan Bedford Forrest. And while a um, calm then settles over um, uh, this part of the, uh, of the battlefield, and as dawn approaches, movement begins um, that are going to set in motion uh, activities in this area. Certainly some of the, um, uh, of the mounted scouts of McCook's brigade could have discovered it, some of the Union skirmishers, or even a few Union soldiers just wandering around um, would, uh, could have potentially discovered it. But one thing they learned um, uh, that night is that in the area of the steam sawmill itself, and in fact, the reason the steam sawmill was located where it was, was a small spring. And one of the things that the year-long drought that had affected this region, and in particular, the, uh, the lack of rain in the last um, six weeks or so, um, was affecting was the availability of water. Um, and the soldiers are going to look for any opportunity to fill their canteens. Word um, is spread amongst men of, um, of McCook's brigade that there is water available um, outside of the um, skirmish line or picket line of, the, uh, of McCook's brigade. 
Um, and some Union soldiers will begin to make their way towards the steam sawmill in the spring to fill their canteens. As dawn approaches um, and the recognition that um, the soldiers' canteens need to be filled um, in anticipation of um, perhaps being in battle that day, and the recognition that one of the first things a wounded soldier is going to request is, um, is water, and in addition, the soldiers desiring their morning cup of coffee. While there are individual soldiers making their way towards the spring, you also begin to see organized details. Uh, within the 86th um, Illinois, soldiers from each company are detailed to carry the canteens of the men of that company to the spring. And in fact, the detail for that um, regiment is put under the command of um, one soldier. And he, direct, or he is directed to take the detail to the spring and fill the canteens. As he approached the, um, the skirmish line or picket line at the edge of the woods, the edge of the field, um, and um, understanding that there was the likelihood of Confederates not that far to the south, he makes the decision to send his detail forward to the spring, spread out as if it were a skirmish line. Um, he orders his men to deploy, including a small number of men from the 52nd Ohio, um, but he notes that while he has organized his small detachment um, as a skirmish line, there are additional Union soldiers simply making their way towards the spring. Um, and this 86th Illinois detachment will get amongst the, um, the features of the sawmill and begin their work of filling the canteens. Um, since it is um, uh, approaching um, uh, uh, daylight and dawn, um, and there is the, the desire for a cup of coffee, some of those Union soldiers who have made it to the spring even build a fire to begin warming water to um, create that uh, morning cup of coffee. About this time, the Confederate um, uh, cavalry that had been spread out across the rear of the, um, uh, of the con larger Confederate force to the south um, is ordered to probe forward to themselves, try to determine what this Federal force is in this area. The companies that had been um, deployed overnight are sent forward. They are reinforced by some additional um, uh, troops of the 1st Georgia Cavalry, um, and um, uh, Henry B. Davidson, who has arrived about this time and taking command of that brigade, um, begins to bring the rest of the brigade forward, along with the division commander John Pegram and Nathan Bedford Forrest himself. And just as it begins to get light, one of the Confederate cavalrymen staying um, that um, they could still clearly see the fire burning in the, in the distance. As they approach from the south, they see Federal soldiers around the spring and around the fire, um, and they will open fire on those Federal soldiers. And in just a few minutes time, a skirmish fight begins to unfold um, here in the, um, uh, in the uh, southern end of the Jays Mill Field and in the woods just to the south. Dan McCook, overnight, having um, grown concerned about um, uh, what that, um, that firing um, in the darkness um, uh, potentially portended, um, also concerned about um, Reed's Bridge itself, has also makes some changes um, in those, that early morning time period. He orders his brigade to reorient from facing um, eastward or southeastward astride the Reeds Bridge Road to facing more to the south. He orders the skirmish line to conduct essentially a giant right wheel to swing um, uh, so that they are not looking um, east across the Jays Mill Field, but so that that skirmish line actually extends eastward across the, uh, the field. 
This in part facilitates the sending of the 69th Ohio, a regiment that is attached to his brigade at this time, uh, literally being brought forward from the detached duty it had been assigned to in the rear to be returned to its normal um, brigade command. With the 69th Ohio is ordered to march um, through the, um, the woods and fields on the north side of the Reeds Bridge Road out to the area of Reeds Bridge to set that bridge on fire, to burn that bridge, to remove that um, way across the, um, uh, the creek. And so this reorientation um, of McCook's brigade to the south not only faces towards where there is a possible Confederate threat, but also facilitates the movement of the 69th Ohio out to, the, um, to Reed's Bridge. And as this skirmish fight in the woods um, increases, and the anxiety amongst the rest of McCook's men begins to rise, with the soldiers ordered to, um, to load their, um, their weapons, bringing their cartridge boxes um, uh, from the, their, their, the back of their right hip um, uh, forward so that it'll be um, more handy to draw the, uh, the cartridges. Um, the, um, uh, the, the action between the skirmishers on the, uh, the battle line or skirmish line um, will increase. Out at Reed's Bridge, a detachment of the 69th Ohio actually makes it to the bridge itself. Um, the planks already um, loose on the bridge, some even replaced with fence rails and planking from J.J. Um, Reed's barn, um, are, um, are piled up and um, uh, some greasy rags are used to start a small fire um, amongst those rails. But just as the men of the 69th Ohio are starting their fire on um, the bridge itself, some Confederates approach from the, uh, the other side and not wanting to um, start a, any sizable engagement there, the 69th Ohio will, um, will pull away from the Reeds Bridge area and pull back to the area of um, Dan McCook's main body. And when they arrive, they will report that they have burned Reed's Bridge. As um, uh, the, the skirmish fight um, uh, intensifies in about 7 a.m., Dan McCook will receive a very welcome message. Having communicated um, overnight that he had not been able to find Minty's brigade and being a normal part of the Reserve Corps troops of Gordon Granger positioned up at Rossville Gap, McCook now um, receives an order to return to the Rossville Gap area um, and with evidence of a potential, potential sizable Confederate force in this area, he does not tarry in making his departure. Ordering his um, five infantry regiments and his battery um, uh, to, um, to begin pulling out um, uh, to the west, he sends staff officers out to the skirmish line to order them to fall back. But at least for the skirmishers of the 86th um, Illinois, they don't get the word, um, claiming that the staff officer sent to them um, uh, did not um, uh, venture into the, uh, to the heated action at relatively short range that was then unfolding. But as, uh, and as those skirmishers will fall back, they get back to where they expect it to find the, uh, the brigade deployed, only to see the rear of McCook's, McCook's column disappearing um, to the west down Reed's Bridge Road. And the Union um, skirmishers will then quickly disengage from the growing number of Confederate cavalrymen in this area. And that fight that had begun just at daylight in this area now will die down and silence will again reign over this part of the battlefield for a short time. But the size of this engagement has brought um, John Pegram and Nathan Bedford Forrest with the rest of Davidson's brigade to this area, and it the size of that fight suggests to them that there might be 
a larger federal force is somewhere in this area that um, these Union troops that they've had contact with have fallen back on. Um, and since Bragg is still hoping to strike what he hopes will still be the Union left flank at Lee and Gordon's Mill. Um, Forrest feels it is important to find out what this federal force is and where it is located. And Forrest will begin to send um, scouts and patrols out, some staff officers, as well as detachments of, um, uh, of Confederate um, uh, cavalry units that are in the area and they will begin um, probing out to find um, a federal force. As Dan McCook had marched back out towards the Lafayette Road, he had encountered um, uh, Union troops, elements of the lead of George Thomas's 14th Corps, which had marched all night long, extending the Union left flank further to the north, thereby essentially offsetting Bragg's move of the day before, and two, um, that lead element, and then to Thomas himself, Dan McCook will report that here in the area of Jay's Mill and Reed's Bridge, which has been burned, is one lone Confederate brigade, McNair's brigade, which um, is potentially ripe for the picking, that it can be captured. And George Thomas will then um, send troops uh, from Brannan's division out from the Kelly Field eastward to try to accomplish that mission. And just in the woods to the west of where we are right now, there, uh, they will meet some of these Confederate cavalry um, uh, patrols um, and what becomes the history books Battle of Chickamauga on September the 19th and 20th. A very different battle than the one that Bragg desired. And it is a battle that really turns on little things. The chance encounter in the dark in the woods just to the south of us. Dan McCook's men getting water from around the spring at Jay's Mill. McCook's position here at the western edge of the Jay's Mill field. In little places like this, the Battle of Chickamauga will both begin and take important turns. The pictures shown in this video are described as follows. Image number one, a black and white photo of Confederate General Braxton Bragg, seated with head slightly turned, with dark and light colored full beard, wearing dark gray Confederate General's coat, with General's insignia of three stars within a wreath on the collar, and two rows of brass buttons buttoned down the front. Image number two, a black and white photo of Colonel Dan McCook, seated, slightly turned, with dark hair and full dark goatee, wearing a dark blue Union officer's coat with gold shoulder board visible on the right shoulder, and two rows of brass buttons buttoned down the front, but with his right hand inside the right row of buttons. Image number three, a black and white photo of Confederate General John Bell Hood, seated and slightly turned, with full dark hair combed backward and full dark beard, wearing a light gray Confederate officer's coat with three stars on the collar and two rows of brass buttons buttoned down the front. Image number four, a black and white photo of Confederate General John Pegram, seated, slightly turned, with head turned toward camera, with dark hair combed to the left and dark goatee, wearing light gray Confederate officer's coat, with two rows of brass buttons buttoned down the front. Image number five, video panning from left to right and slightly down to up, showing a narrow stream with thick grass and wildflowers beside it. Image number six, black and white photo of Confederate General Nathan Bedford Forrest, seated with dark hair combed backward and full dark goatee, wearing a light gray Confederate General's coat with General's insignia of three stars within a wreath on the collar and two rows of brass buttons buttoned down the front. 
Image number seven, a bronze relief plaque depicting the capture and burning of Reed's Bridge during the Battle of Chickamauga. The relief shows soldiers storming the wooden bridge, firing their rifles with trees on both sides of the stream.